What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of SOP. I'm your host, Enzo the God. Alright, look, let's just get straight to the point. If you guys watched the last video, then you guys already know what happened here. We went ahead and removed the rear end um, in the rain. It literally started raining on us and it was annoying, really annoying. But for the most part, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know that this video today is going to be about pretty much removing all the little pieces that we have and then spray painting the interior portions and cleaning up a lot of this stuff. Um, I am going to note down what things I do need to re replace, show you guys things that are currently damaged, and um, just pretty much talk to you guys and try to possibly get some suggestions in the comment section as far as for um, what colors to paint certain things. But for the most part right now, I am painting, and I did kind of start right here. I'm not sure, there you go, kind of, sort of. You can tell the difference from this side to this side. I am using a flat um, rust tough, just because uh, I'm testing it out. I did have this one lying around. Um, doesn't seem too bad, but for the most part, I will be, um, putting things in boxes and really trying to identify what I really want painted different colors and things like that. Might not go the traditional route. You know how most people do the, the reds and the blues. I might not do that just because um, you know this car is going to be a little different as far as for color. Uh, there's only one person out there that I know has this specific color on their car and I haven't told you guys what color yet. Um, but more than likely I am going to imitate that color just because it's so sick and it looks really good on this car. But yeah, let's go ahead and start breaking some things down. Spray painting, like I said before, the spray painting portion of it. I really don't put much in just because I don't want to get any overspray on the lens. But I will probably put it a little bit of a distance. That way I can go ahead and show you guys the process and the befores and afters obviously. So let's get to that. ahead and uh, gave it one coat right as of right now not 100% sure how that looks uh, there you go gave it one coat yes I do have a lot of overspray um, and that's fine the other reason why I'm okay with that is because I am gonna go underneath anyway and just go ahead and spray paint everything underneath as far as for the rear um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna paint it with the same can right here or I'm actually gonna be using uh, bed bed liner so I don't know why I have a hard time always with that word I have no idea but I will be spray painting underneath uh, just because um, I do want to make sure that there won't be any potential rusts over time uh, because I am actually planning on keeping this car for a while um, shoot I might even keep it forever but can you guys guess that one? Can you guys guess what that was? Because it for sure sounded like a 370C because I just have a headache right here right now because of it. But anyway, all right, check it out. I'm going to be removing the actual brake calipers as well. Um, not sure when I will be doing that. I don't think I'll be doing that today just because it's not a priority for me right now to actually remove this. Um, I do want to end up getting it powder coated. I've always spray painted them, but over time, I'm sure you guys know how they get. They get pretty, um, I guess you could say, I know the fading is, is common, but they start to like crack um, and things like that. They just, you, this just doesn't look right. You can tell. I mean, if you want to do it right, obviously it takes a lot more prepping. Um, and I don't want to do that. I just want to go ahead and actually send it somewhere where they're already going to do a good job. And I'm just going to re return, I mean, receive it. I'm sorry. I'm just going to receive it and um, just put them on. That's it. That's all I really want to do with this. Um, but I wanted to show you guys something. I'm not too familiar with these. I know there are some people out there that are very familiar with it. Oh, before I before I even continue with that, I do want to mention, no, I didn't primer in here. No, I didn't sand in here. I know there's going to be someone in the comment section talking about that. And um, yeah, I didn't do that. The only reason why I didn't do that is because this isn't 
I don't know, I guess you could say this isn't a show quality thing. This is just for me um, to pretty much let me know that it's not ugly in here. You know, I mean, like I said before in the last video, it doesn't have to be um, acceptable. It just has to be presentable. And this is presentable right now. And I'm okay with that. Uh, just because I don't want to, I don't know, there's people that are more anal than me, I guess. But for me right now, this makes me happy that I don't see the overspray of the yellow in here anymore. So, like, as you can see right here, the overspray. Yeah, I, that bugs me. So, the good thing is that now it's clean in here it looks good um, and when I actually replace the shocks and things like that it'll look a lot better as you guys can see right there too the tank is oversprayed I will be touching that up as well just because I don't want that um, as you guys can see the drive shaft looked like it was pretty beat up you know you see the, little, the circle marks right there the scratches it leads me to believe that it was actually rubbing on something uh, for the most part I know it's very common for them to um, rub on the exhaust the mufflers mainly just because you know the uh the actual rubbers they start to do that i don't know if you can see yeah so they start to like crack and look ugly over time and and with all the movement the actual muffler moves around but the good thing is that someone replaced these with some sop loudmouths um which is a good thing because i really did at one point want to install these on one of my mustangs and the fact that this one has it makes my life a little bit easier um Depending on how they are, obviously, as far as for condition, I will either reuse them or get rid of them and purchase a new whole exhaust set. But as of right now, I don't see a lot of potential damage under here in this area, which is a good thing. So, more money in my pocket. But going back to what I wanted to tell you, uh, you see these um, Maximum Motorsports lower control arms. Uh, like I said, I'm not too familiar with them. I'm not 100% sure how to use them. See how it has a little L wrench slot right there. Um, I'm assuming that's to lock it down in place. Has the grooves. And as you can see right here, to me, I honestly thought the rubber bushing was broken. But it looks like that's how these are. You know? Um, but, which is cool. No complaint from me. But I just thought, I was expecting to see a rubber bushing sticking out or cracking or something. But I guess that's how these are and there's a lot of play right here which is actually pretty cool um i really have to look into why they're designed that way and things like that but i mean it's pretty cool just to, to look at it um i will be removing those um i will be sending them out of powder coat don't know what color to do that yet um don't know if i should leave them black don't know if i should go obnoxious i don't know if i should match the, the body um, color once I actually do spray paint the car send those to the guy and have him paint them uh, I'm not sure yet I really don't know I might I don't know might decide to leave everything black under here and have little subtle touches maybe with the sway bars and things like that but I don't know that's a little too far out for, for me at least right now as of right now I do want to remove a lot of this stuff um, I do want to separate the drive shaft from the actual rear end because I do want to clean the rear end up um, I do want to remove the little caliper right there um, and remove the, the rotors, really clean it up and just get to work on that because I do want to paint that. I think I'm just going to paint that flat black um, just because I don't feel like I need to paint it uh, with bed liner just because, you know, it's just, I mean, I feel like the paint's going to be enough for that. I don't think I need to put bed liner in there or on there, sorry. Um, and I know bed liner is a little heavy. Not that I really care about weight right now, just because I know the car's going to be quick. So, if your car's quick, your car's quick. If it's slow, it's slow. Stop, stop blaming all the weight. Don't get me wrong. If you're going to break records and stuff, every inch and freaking everything counts on the car as far as for weight. But I'm not doing that. This is just a street car, and I do want to put some people on my list. So, yeah. Let's just start tearing things down, spray painting, and get to work. So, let's do that. All right guys, just wanted to show you guys something. Um, as you guys seen, I'm over here trying to take off the actual, um, the bolts for the drive shaft. And they were loose. They were very loose. So, I don't know if the previous person didn't tighten them up at all, but look, check it out. 
Don't get me wrong, I already loosened them, but they were like this already. They were all like this. I didn't even have to try. It was just bloop, really, really easy to remove them. So, yeah, I... Man, imagine, just imagine if I would have purchased the vehicle and drove it like that. I probably wouldn't have made it more than, I don't know, 10 miles without it actually vibrating very bad. That would have sucked. Guys, guys, as you guys can see, the rear end is finally clean. But I didn't account for something. I didn't really think it through all the way. The reason why is because I just wet the whole floor. And I need to be on the floor to take out the rest of the parts. So I kind of messed up there. I didn't really think that far ahead. But as of right now, I mean look at the look at the rear end. Looks a lot better. Um, a little chrome piece right there. Yeah, that's gonna go. I don't like chrome. I'm not a big fan of chrome or polished, whatever. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, so that's for sure gonna either be replaced by something new or it's gonna be painted. Um, if anyone has any recommendations as far as for what to use for those, go ahead and uh, let me know. Um, Alright, but as of right now, I am looking at the bushings. As you guys can see, uh, hopefully you guys can see, I don't really think you can. Let me see if I actually, whoop, there it is. All right, you see this one right here, this bushing, it has some cracks in it. That's gonna go ahead and be replaced. Um, this one on the back side is cracked as well. So that's gonna go ahead and be replaced. If you have any bushings that you guys recommend, go ahead and comment below or DM me in my Instagram. Um, the reason why I'm asking that is because obviously we don't wanna do things twice. If we can do it the first time with a good product, um, that would be ideal. But as of right now, so I did measure the rear um, rotors and I did notice that they were 11 and a half and some change, uh, almost 12 inches um, in diameter. Uh, I told you guys already that I am considering getting some Brembo's. I for sure will be getting them in the front. Uh, a lot of people tell me to leave the rears alone, that the rears will be fine with the actual Cobra rear brakes. Um, it is a coin toss for me. The only reason why I say that is because I do like big um, discs in the rear. The only reason why I say that is because I do like it when uh, you have a wheel and the disc covers up pretty much all the space on the inside just because I don't like the look of seeing everything else underneath it. Um, I don't know, it just looks more sporty, especially nowadays, 2019, 2020, whatever, um, that you see them they just look so badass and I do want that badass look as well. I My main goal is not to look like everyone else, especially in the Mustang community, just because anyone can go to any site and purchase Mustang parts. They're just so out there that everyone picks the same look. If you were to go with a little different type of style, everyone thinks you're too JDM. So I like somewhere in the middle. I do like the JDM look. Um, I do like the sporty look. I just wanna make it me, but as far as for what I was trying to get to, I went off on a on a different different trail there. I also wanted to show you guys um, 
the lug nuts here, the lug studs, I'm sorry, the studs themselves, I will be replacing those uh, with ARPs, um, especially in the rear. The fronts, I will probably leave them alone, uh, just the rear because that's where all the real work is and I don't want anything snapping on me anytime soon. So I will be ordering those for sure. I will be ordering those bushings for sure. And I will be painting this rear end but right now it is wet so I can't touch any of that right now. I will be opening the rear end. I do want to see what's inside. Uh, when I was moving it around, I was hearing some banging in there, but maybe there's no oil in there. Um, I don't know, I really have to check in there because I do have to get new a new rear end kit for seals and things like that. I did a 94-95 body style rear end. Um, I'm pretty sure they're the same thing but there is a little here and there things that are different that that one didn't have that this one does but as of right now I feel like I'm gonna end this video because I did mess up um, the floor and I don't think it will be dry in time because as of right now I don't know if you guys can tell it's kinda gloomy uh, it does look like it wants to rain again but I will end it here thank you guys for tuning in thank you guys for subscribing and I'll catch you guys on the next one Thank you.